My uh, thought and word for today is the intrinsic value of a father. And can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Y'all too quiet in here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I want to know that somebody is out there. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, I'm going to turn to Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. And we want to talk about the intrinsic value of a father. I was so blessed in preparing for this Father's Day message because God met me. I, I, I was saying, Lord, I'm reading a lot of information. I'm studying a lot. I said, but I don't feel no inspiration. And so I had to stop. And in the midst of stopping, the Holy Spirit began to open up the word to me. And the inspiration came. And I felt so empowered. I felt such love. And, and as, I, as the Holy Spirit was in, expounding his word, I realized that this right here is the most treasured and valuable possession that you can have in your life. The word of God is so awesome that anything you need any understanding that you need, any hope you need, any truth you need to know, is in here. It is more precious than silver and it's more costly than gold. So I encourage everybody in here to take another deeper look at this book. Because it's not just any book. It's a book of life. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a pathway. It'll get you from earth to glory. Amen. And every other place in between. If you want success, it's in this book. If you want to prosper, it's in this book. And I can't hold up the word of God high enough to tell you how valuable this book is. And I can tell you sometimes I've, I laid it down and I've taken it lightly. But when the Holy Spirit began to expound truth out of this book, it literally changed my mindset about his word and about God. So today we're going to talk about the intrinsic value of fathers. Dust this book off. Dust it off. Pick it back up. And start all over again. And if you want a change in your life, you'll find it in this book. Amen. So much for that. Fathers, you are an intrinsic value to our society and your family and your children. Being a father is rooted in God's image because God is Father. Ephesians chapter 3, 14 and 15 says, For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Do y'all take note of that? There's a family in heaven. Hey Amen. It's not just the family here on earth. The idea started in heaven. The idea of family. So men, I want you to listen for you will find your purpose, your, your value, your worth in the word of God. Okay? Um...
Let's look at God as Father. God is a God of purpose. Everything in life has purpose, and that purpose comes from God. Amen? He's the source and the sustainer of everything. He is the Father of creation. Everything started with God. In the beginning, God. Malachi 2.10 says, Have we not all father, one Father? Talking about the Father God. Did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our fathers? By breaking with one another. Uh, by breaking faith. Breaking faith with one another. Amen. Relationships are important to God. Amen. Relationships are important to God. That in his covenant relationship, God values the bond in those relationships. God values the, the purpose why he created fathers. And um, let's look at covenant. Covenant, and we're going to talk about covenant because covenant is an agreement. It's, a, it's from the word, Hebrew word, berit. And it means a covenant, a compact, a pledge, a treaty, an agreement. This is one of the most theologically important words in the Bible. It appears more than 250 times when you say it's, it has, it's noteworthy. When the covenant is mentioned 250 times in the Bible. The Bible is divided between two covenants. The first covenant is Old Testament. There was a covenant relationship between God and man. The second covenant is the New Testament. It's, it's a covenant of God's word that he made to us through his son, Jesus Christ. We're under the first covenant, we were under the covenant of law, but under the New Testament, we are under the covenant of grace. Amen? And this is where we find where we have our redemption through the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins so that we have the covenant with God that everyone that believes will have eternal life. Amen. So covenant is very important, and I want to bring out that covenant relationship. Um, a burrit may be made between an individual, two individuals, a king and his people, or by God with his people. God's irrevocable pledge is that he will be God to Abraham and his descendants forever. That means that covenant relationship cannot be broken. Amen. To the day it still stands, God loved Israel. Okay? The greatest provisions for the Abraham covenant, this is the foundation for Israel. Uh, eternal relationship to God was affirmed by David. It was confirmed by the Lord himself in Jeremiah 13, 19 to 26, and by Paul, Romans 9, 4. Um, I want to read those scriptures, but we're not going to camp there because we want to move on to what God wanted to reveal about his covenant relationship and our intrinsic value as men, as fathers. Amen? Okay. 
we're going to look at um, this covenant relationship was affirmed by David in 2 Samuel 7.14. Second Samuel 7, 14 says, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the son of men. Amen. So this is what David was saying about God's uh, covenant relationship. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Okay, now uh, by the Lord himself in Jeremiah 33, 19. Okay. Jeremiah 33, 19 says, And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night so that there will not be day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David, my servant, so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne and with the Levites, the priests, by ministers. Now, God covenant, covenant with David that he was one of his sons will reign as king. That was a covenant promise. Now, what he was saying is, if you can break the covenant of night and the covenant of day, which God created, everything God created is eternal, okay? So it was impossible to break that covenant of the day and night. Because why? We still have day and night now, right? When we leave the earth, day and night going to still be going on. So God's covenant promises are eternal, and they are sure, and he don't break covenant. Amen? Remember, God is a covenant-keeping God. And whatever he covenant with us for, we always have that promise. It won't be broken by him. It may be broken by us. Okay? All right. Um, all right. Um, the, identi the identity of family is God. Humanly speaking, we link, link the identity of husband, wife, and children to their particular family name. Uh, you know, Lamont is a, a Collins. But you know he's a Collins because you identify him by his name, right? Bembridge, we know him by his name. His family is, is called the Bembridges. But that's not who he really is, right? That's not his true identity, their true identity. Um, this is only a surface identification. Family identity has a deeper root, and it's rooted in God. Family is a word that is rooted in God. God is Father. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in himself, God is a divine family. That happened before creation came. Okay? This also expresses itself in the way God relates to his people. Amen. He relates to his people as family. We're the sons of God. Amen. All right, let's look at Genesis 1, 26, 28, and then we're going to really go where God wants us to go with this message. Because for so long, and especially now, the family institution is being sabotaged. It's diminishing. People, 
uh, don't have high regards for a family anymore. You know, f fathers are forsaken their uh, sons, their wives, their children, and not all, but a high percentage than it need to be. Amen? And so God is concerned because society cannot sustain itself without fathers. You see how valuable you are? Amen. Fathers are the providers, the source, the foundation of, ver of the, our very society. And God has put a grave responsibility on the man because God see him as himself. In the beginning, God created man in his own image and his own likeness. Male and female created he them. When he made man, he made man, male and woman. Amen? He didn't make man and woman. He created man. And that man was male and female. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a difference. Because God made them equal in the beginning. Okay, let's look at Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. That's powerful. Man, men, fathers, God created you to have dominion. And not only did he give you dominion, but he gave you identity. Not only did he give you identity, but God gave you purpose and worth. Amen? But society, our society, because our society is getting further and further away from God's truth. That their image is being blurred. Their vision is not as clear anymore of who they are. It's something to have, rule, to have rulership and dominion and have that kind of power to control everything that God has created. He delegated that to man. That's powerful. So when God began to say uh, covenant, fan, um, when he said God created man in his image and his own image, male and female, it introduced a phrase that is a cornerstone of the Bible understanding of man, image of God. The image of God is presented first and foremost in relations to a unique social or community concept of God. Then God, singular, said, let us, plural, make man in our image. You see the community. You see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You see uh, the Godhead. It was a family. 
Many scholars interpret this use of both the singular and plural as an allusion to the Trinity, one God, yet a community of persons. God then proceeds to create man in his own image. At this all-important beginning point, Scripture highlights a particular aspect of man's nature, namely, that which corresponds to the social and community aspect of God's nature. God creates man as male and female, not a solitary individual, but two people. Amen? Yet as we read, we discover that the two are nevertheless one. God said, I created a man and woman, and they too shall be one flesh. For you shall leave mother and father and be one. In other words, you start in a new family, a new uh, entity within your own family to, to duplicate what the Father God is to humanity. Amen? Praise God. The, commu the community that reflects God's image is a special community. When God chose to create man in his own image, he created a marriage, a family. The community of the family is a reflection of the community and that God has its identity, life, and power come from God. Okay? Going back to Ephesians 3, verses 14 and 15. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the family in heaven and earth is named. Amen? So, what are you saying about the covenant relationship? From uh, the beginning, it is revealed, God is revealed as a covenant maker. He in instituted the covenant. Jeremiah referred to God's activity in Jeremiah 33, 20 as uh, God's activity in creation as acts of covenant. Thereby, the unchangeable character of God's nature is emphasized as his relationship with all his creation is portrayed as an immutable bond. That means that bond can never be broken under his sovereign administration. And we know God is the beginning and end on all things. He, he is not going anywhere. But this is what God had revealed to me about the covenant. He covenanted with Adam, and he gave Adam dominion. Adam fell on a sin, entered the world, and so the man had gotten so depraved that God had to start all over again. So God sought for a, a man. He could have called a nation, he, but he sought for a man, and he chose Noah. He made a covenant with Noah. This is how valuable men are. God's covenant relationship is about family. And so he chose Noah and his children. And Noah tried to win as many people to the Lord as he could during that dispensation. Nobody listened to Noah. Noah said, it's going to rain. Nobody ever heard of rain. And so they scorned him. They mocked him. But how many people know that God never go back on his word? When God says something, he's, it's settled. It's settled. If God promised you something, it's sure. And so he promised Noah that it was going to rain 40 days and 40 nights, and so he told Noah to build an ark. But after the, that 
after Noah had built the ark and he gathered his family in and he closed the ark up, sure enough, it started pouring down rain, 40 days and 40 nights. And so many people died. Amen. And as a result of that, when the waters rescinded and uh, the bird came and Noah was let out, God spoke to Noah again. And when he spoke to Noah, he gave another covenant. He said, Noah, almost the same one that he gave Adam, I want you to replenish the earth. Amen. And the promises that he made uh, through the Abraham, um, the, um, the covenant with Noah, it was to bless the people because they were going to start all over again. The point is, God is so concerned about man and that relationship and the covenant that he always, he's always working to preserve mankind. The, the next covenant that came was the Abrahamic covenant. And that's when God said, okay, I, see, God is serious about family. He's, con he's uh, concerned about the family structure and the family order. So when Abraham, who God saw as a righteous man, was willing to offer up his own son, all right, and as, as a result of that, God made a covenant with Abraham. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to change your name from Abram to Abraham. For I will make you a father of many nations. There is that word again, father. A sign of covenant was that every male child among you shall be circumcised. And so the purpose of the circumcision was so that man would not be uh, dependent on himself. So he gave a sign to the covenant that he made Abraham. He said, Abraham, I want you to uh, circumcise every man in your tribe. And circumcision is bloody. So it was the blood that sealed the covenant that could not be broken with Abraham. Did God fulfill the covenant? Yes, he did. Abraham was called the father of many nations, and his seed would be blessed. The land would be blessed. They are, they were, he would be prosperous. These were the provisions because of the covenant that God made with Abraham before, because of his concern for a society. So for God is concerned about people in a society and that family structure, the society is only as strong as the families that are in it. So fathers, you have an intrinsic purpose. God cares about you. And you know, sometimes we take fathers and that role as a father lightly. We take it for granted. You know, women say, I don't need a man. Right? Uh, women don't respect some of the uh, Responsibilities that husbands have, fathers have, uh, not only for the household, but for their children and their posterity. But God is concerned about it. God created you to be providers, protectors. He wants you to have self-worth. He wants you to know who you are. And so many people today, so many men are floundering 
They don't know their purpose. They don't know their worth. They don't know who their identity. They're struggling with identity. Some of them don't know whether they should be men or women. Whether they should be, they throw their seed away. They plant the seed anywhere. Because they don't know who they are. And they don't know the value of who they are. They don't know the responsibility that has been given to them by God. God loves family. God loves society. God loves you as much or more than you could ever love yourself. Amen. Man's purpose and identity is in his fatherhood. For he provides the purpose and identity of his family. Adam was to provide for his family and tend the garden and, uh, the garden and creation. Abram signed a covenant was circ- uh, sign of his covenant was circumcision, the cutting away of the foreskin, the shedding of blood. The identity a family is in God because man was made in God's image and likeness. And the idea of family started with him. Amen. Okay, I want to go to... Um, Genesis 1, 3, and 5. I'm sorry. Verses 1, 3, and 5. I think I read that already. Let me check. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be. God does not waste words. When God said, man, be fruitful and multiply, It was in the confines of family. Amen. It was that God wanted to preserve humanity. He wanted to preserve the family and the family order and the structure. But if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you're supposed to be about, You can't carry it out. But it's when you understand the value of who you are, the purpose for which God has created you, then you know how to function. And you can then take dominion over what's going on in the world. Do you not know that the earth, our world as we know it, is is diminishing? Our resources are diminishing. Our airways, uh, uh, there's gases in the environment. That's destroying the uh, ozone layer and the earth and all these things. It's God has given all the natural resources God has given us, but he gave men to have dominion over his environment. Amen? But when we are men, when you're out of line with God, 
You cannot operate in the commission that he's given to you. You cannot produce the things. It's just like uh, um, uh, having a motor and you don't have no gasoline in it. Car won't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere if you don't know what God's purpose for you, what your God's purpose for your life and your worth and your value from a God perspective. So then God, going back to covenant relationship, God said, I covenant for your families, for you to replenish the earth, told Noah. He told Abraham, I'll make your fathers many nations. Okay? And then there came the covenant of grace through Jesus Christ. And so God said, okay, so since you can't obey me, and keep covenant with me, I'm going to put a new nature in you. I'm going to put my laws in your heart. So that now you have no excuse to have dominion and authority in the earth. And I made a new covenant. And through that covenant, I promise blessings. I promise that you will prosper. I'm giving you again the ability to take dominion. To rule your households. Not in fear, but in faith and in love. For now I have put in you myself. And so when you yield to me, when you obey the things that I have given you to do, I'm going to give you back honor. I'm going to let my glory rest upon you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to build your self-worth Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won't be floundering, but you'll know what the will of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll know how to treat the helpmate that I have given you. Lover. Listen and be concerned about her needs. And as a result of you obeying that command, because I instituted the, 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 I instituted marriage yes. from the beginning. And as long as you keep marriage covenant, I will bless you. And from that family unit, I'm going to bless your community. From that community, I'm going to bless your nation. From your nation, I shall bless the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you now have in you my image and likeness. Not from a carnal sense, a fleshly sense, but from a spiritual sense. You're now the sons of God. You're a kingdom of priests. You now have access into my presence and to my power. What you don't think you are, I can make you to become. Hallelujah. And what it takes is this word, a willingness to humble yourself, 
to seek God's face, submit in obedience to him, and God promised he would give you good success. He'll show you how to build your families up, how to build your wives up, change their image of you, their view of you, because you become more like him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. See, God made you a provider, and he made you a protector. And then he's given you dominion to teach and rule your households. Hallelujah. So women, as you're, the Lord is dealing with the fathers, and they're going through their metamorphosis, they're going through their change, you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to pray for them and cover them with your prayers. Because the thing that you want is in them. Yeah. Hallelujah. It, it ain't in nobody else. That mate that you have is in, you're in covenant relationship, good or bad. But if you submit to God and humble yourself, God will build, and you build the man of God. Build him up. Esteem him. Don't try to compete with your mate. But come alongside of him and work with what you got. Work with it. You can make it better. Hallelujah. Honor him and God will honor you. God loves fathers. You have an intrinsic value, but you got to know it. Sometimes we so broken down by society, they've taken everything, stripped you of everything, your pride, your ambition, your drive, and make you feel like you're less than anything on earth. But God don't see you that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. God don't see you like that. If you want to change what you are, who you are, there's a reflection. If you keep your eyes on this, it'll change you. Hallelujah. But one day at a time, it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to cry sometime. But you have a goal now. You're, you're, you're reaching for that image that God said you should be. You're reaching for that likeness that God want to manifest through you. You are so valuable. And women, we got to let them become the men that God wants to, them to be. We got to do it. They get beat down on the job. They get cheated out of the wedges. Don't, they don't want to hire them. They, in an economic crisis, they're under pressure trying to provide and put food on the table. But God see it. And the least we can do is build them. Be there for them. Because your identity is tied up in your husband. Who you are. Who he is is a reflection of who you are. Amen. And and you know, and I often I think about the woman's movement. It was a it was intentional, uh, look, sounded like a good idea. But you know what? Some things that Pete Man has come up with have gotten us further away from God. 
I agree that women should get equal pay and all that. But you are not equal to a man in strength. Because God didn't make you to be that way. And we got it so mixed up now, we don't know uh, a man from a woman nowadays. You, don't, you can't tell the difference. We lost our identity. But it's us humbling ourselves and recognize the value, the intrinsic value of our husbands, our fathers, and our families. Because God ordained it to be. God want to help us, and we are resisting. There's so many fatherless homes. So our children struggling with identity. There's an identity crisis in America. But God said, fathers, you're that are saved and born again and know God, you can change it. And you said, well, your children might be grown and going on, but you can still find a child that you can mentor, you can encourage. You can plant some positive seeds in their life so their life can turn out differently. You're not just a father to your children, but you're a father to the community, to community's children. I look at the young boys on the streets, the teenagers, they're killing each other because they don't know their value. They don't understand covenant. They don't understand fatherhood because they didn't grow up with it. So they don't value their life or anybody else's life. But who does it affect? It affects all of us. Amen. Fathers, you are important. Your role in society is next to none because God had placed you here. So now we have to take that responsibility back. Well, how do I do it? You see God. Get his mind for you and then your society. What can I change? What could I do better? And you'll be amazed what God can do for you and through you. Amen. God bless you.